I'm yeah. sorry, just to clarify, um, one of the options was to go back to the Apple scan, one was to stick with the screens, and one was that these bolts supposedly made them. Well, it wasn't the third thing you said? The third option was that they would attach a software that does the paper screen, people would get the print out of what their vote was. So there was an option of modifying the current machine so that there would be a paper trail. You know how I'm going to answer this question? Help. <laughs> Mike, help or Lloyd? That option was used in Paper jam, people put it in the backwards, uh, use the wrong kind of paper. It, that, that option is pretty much gone. Okay. It's pretty much, and most states, by the way, by now, have moved back toward optical scan. There are. Yeah, there we're are one of the few holdouts. States that are statewide. Yep. DR, right. So that's a long answer, Yale, to a very, very important question. Isn't it? Yeah. What else? Yeah. The Eileen and Chris. Being able to be on the ballot. Who's going to be out there campaigning? Well, I don't know that that's really going to happen. But if a corporation is going to be on the ballot, actually, this is a very interesting question. If a corporation is going to be on the ballot, who's going to be out there campaigning? I don't think Chris Van Hollen really expects this to go all the way. Maybe he does. Uh, I, but he's certainly making a point, and isn't that, and how would we answer that? Who would be out there campaigning? You know, it sure as hell wouldn't be plain old voters, would it be? So, anyway. I was wondering about that too, after and then I'll get the Chris. Supreme Court came through with that thing, saying that the corporations have as much right and the, and the uh, ability to be heard. Why can't they vote? Yeah, no, very interesting. Yeah, I, I don't know how to answer that. I wanna, I'm going to get you, Chris, but I want to introduce this gentleman who's leaving here right now, who's working with PATH. I'm not trying to embarrass you. He's down in Annapolis working very, very hard to secure better rights for people who live in mobile homes in Howard County. And he's really doing um, yeah, He's really doing a great job, and I think he has a chance of getting his bill through. And I just wanted to thank you before you left, you Wendell. You Wendell, you're welcome for all the work you're doing. Okay, Chris. Um, <clears throat> want me to turn the discussion to local politics, all being local. I think that's what Tip O'Neill said. Um, and, and also back to const and to construction, since you led mm -hmm. off with that. Um, I'm going to turn the focus on to Council Bills 58 and 59. We all know mm -hmm. what it is. It's downtown Columbia. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to know what you believe. Do you believe the county executive and the county council abdicated their public responsibility by adopting and supporting those council bills? And a couple of related questions. Do you think the county executive and the county council members made a serious error in doing so? And a final question. Do you think those bills are ill advised? They're okay. all related. Okay. But if you're interested in the future and construction, those are the biggest construction projects to come to this county in decades. And so all of those pieces, you're worried about job creation, you want to promote construction, you want to redo downtown Columbia and the asphalt jungle that we have. Those bills, I think, do so. And so the question again is, did the council... Did the county executive advocate? Okay, I got, I got your questions. I'll answer them. Okay. I have no idea. I, you know, I can't get into whether somebody abdicated their responsibility. I have absolutely no idea. I um, signed on to a, a position paper four and a half years ago now about what I would like to see in downtown Columbia, which is a lot more development, a lot more housing for people of all income levels, more help public realm, more open spaces, more retail, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. My concern, and I don't, this is not, I, my job is to do the state legislation, and that's what I'm, I'm going to answer your question, because clearly you, you feel strongly and want an answer. My job is to vote on all these state issues, and that's where my priority is. Do I have concerns about what happened? In downtown? Yes, I do. I have I mentioned TIFs. I'm very concerned about TIFs. I think a lot of people are concerned about TIFs for funding mechanisms. And I am concerned that we may not have enough assurances 
to see that the good environmental things that took that were in this proposal in this bill now it's not a proposal anymore is it that they I don't think there's enough in there to ensure that that will happen there's nothing I would like more than to be proven wrong I intend to continue to participate in the future follow-up pieces of legislation that come, uh, come up. I will give my opinion. I gave my opinion on a lot of things during this process so far and frequently didn't get any feedback or response to what I said, but that's okay. I'll go back and I'll do it again. And uh, I just am very hopeful that, that it will work out well. But as to people's responsibility, it's all I can do to um, keep track of whether I'm doing my own responsibility. For instance, if people ask me about motives, what were their motives, and I would say this to anyone who questions anyone's motives, it's all I can do to keep track of my own. I have no idea what's going on with other people's um, motives. So, okay? Yeah. Okay. Yes, Steve? Uh, I was wondering if there's any thought of creating an early warning system on mortgage foreclosures. I mean, banks go when people miss a mortgage payment, and but they'll, often they'll wait till two or three or four or five before, and then they'll send the sheriff out with a foreclosure notice. That's just not true. That's okay. Not. okay. Sir, excuse me. No, uh, Chris, there is one thing I'm going to tell you. I'm really glad you're here this year for the first time, and I'm really glad. We've done this for many years, and we don't allow interruptions. Okay? I'll, I'll, I'll get you and anyone else who wants to ask me a question, whether they've ever been here before or not, but we don't allow interruptions. Okay? Well, I, I just happen to know a case in which that happened. So I was wondering. It's, it's, I don't know. I think it's, I, um, I've scribbled a note down here. I'll, I'll take a look at these bills that we're doing to deal with trying to not totally throw in the towel as soon as a you know, foreclosure notice comes out. And then you're saying get at it before that. Don't wait until there's a foreclosure yeah, notice. The problem is the bank does notify people that they're liable. Mm -hmm. People are already embarrassed and they don't open their mail. Mm -hmm. And scared. And scared. And scared. Yeah. I don't know the answer, so I'm not going to pretend I do, but I'll find out. And you know, the thing about corporations being persons, mm -hmm. there's a, um, I'm a corporation, you see. Uh, that ruling was never ruled on. That decision was never made. It was written by a secretary, a, a clerk of the court, in, uh, in a summary of, of a decision. And, um, and I, I've got the second hand. But I'm, I just heard a fellow that did some research on it, and, and was done by a guy who was paid off by a corporation to do it in the 1800s. Mm -hmm. We've been living with it ever since. Very day. interesting. I don't know that. Okay, notice of late payment. 